let's go to our scripture reading here for today and the message, which comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Where is Matthew? The first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. I will be reading out of my New American Standard Bible translation. I will also have those words up here on the screen. Please follow along with me in your Bibles. If you have your place in your Bibles, let me hear you say amen. amen. Let's stand while God's word is being read here this morning. Starting with verse number 18, Matthew 1, 18. A very familiar story to all of us. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. I have titled today's message as the angel commanded. And those are the exact words that we can find in Matthew chapter one, verse number 24. Well, since this is the Sunday before Christmas of 2021, I want to speak this morning about one particular event that we find in the birth narrative. Now, you might ask, well, what is the birth narrative, Mike? Well, it's the scripture text that we find in our Bibles that tell us about the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth narrative scripture text can be found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 1 and 2, the Gospel of Luke, chapters 1 and 2. This birth narrative is not found in the book of the Gospel of Mark, nor in the Gospel of John. We all know the story. About 2,000 years ago, there was a carpenter named Jesus who, excuse me, a carpenter named Joseph, who lived in the small town of Nazareth. He finds himself, as we read here, in a very difficult situation. The circumstances that he finds himself are not his fault and are totally out of his control. He just wants to do a good thing. Joseph just wants to marry his childhood sweetheart, a girl named Mary. But the situation has changed and dictates otherwise. These are certainly trying times for Joseph. So let's define Joseph's situation. It's pretty simple. The girl that Joseph is about to marry is pregnant. And the child she is carrying is not his. His plan to marry Mary, like any other Jewish boy's plans, has now changed. What is the right thing for Joseph to do in such a difficult situation? Before we answer that, first let me share with you some historical facts about Jewish marriage customs at that time. And I think this is very interesting because it will help us relate to Joseph's situation and the decision that he needs to make. This is the way it was 2,000 years ago in the Jewish community in the Middle East. Before the actual marriage, there was a period of time called a betrothal, 
we see this word used here in verse number 18 of our scripture text. Some Bible translations use the word betrothal. Some use the word engaged. Some use the word pledged. They all mean the same thing. The betrothal period will last about one year. During that year, the girl would prove her faithfulness by not giving herself to anyone else. And this would prove her purity for her and to her husband to be. During that same year, the boy would be considered her husband, even though the marriage ceremony had not yet taken place. He would prepare a home for her, usually with an addition to his father's house. Augustus, who was the emperor at that time, had set the minimum age for an engagement at 10 years of age. According to Roman law, the minimum age for girls to be married was 12. For boys, who develop a little slower, it was 14. Jewish practice followed Roman law, just as we follow the law of our land here today. At that time, most Jewish girls got betrothed and then married at this early age, usually around the time when they first reached puberty. So Mary could have been as young as 12 and Joseph as young as 14 when they actually got married. A betrothal was a binding legal relationship. It was actually a contract that was arranged by the parents, the parents of Joseph with the parents of Mary. During this time, the husband-to-be would pay a dowry, a price, to the father of the bride-to-be. The negotiated price would be what the father of the bride thought his daughter was worth. This betrothal period, again, lasted about one year. There would be no sexual relationships between the boy and the girl during this period of time. Also, the couple would not be living together during this period of time. Since the betrothal contract was legal and binding, only death or divorce could sever that contract. And if the man died, the betrothed girl would be considered a widow. At the end of that year, when they were 13, 14, whatever age they may be, there would be a wedding feast that usually lasted about seven days when everybody in the community come together. Then at the end of those seven days, the friend of the bridegroom would hand the groom his bride and everybody would go home. The marriage would then be consummated. We read, if we remember in John chapter 2, Jesus is at a wedding feast in Cana, and the wedding feast ran out of wine. Well, here's one possible reason. They last seven days, and they had a really bad wedding planner. <laughs> but they ran out of wine, and we know what Jesus did. So Joseph finds himself in a legal and binding agreement, contract with Mary's parents. And no doubt, the entire town of Nazareth knew about this betrothal. And I'm sure they were all looking forward to that seven-day celebration. But, what a transition word. But, now Joseph's fiance Mary, is pregnant. Oh boy. Now what? According to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 13 through 19, she should be stoned to death for such an offense. What's Joseph to do? Well, we know this in Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, the text tells us this. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. Joseph will do the best thing that he can considering these circumstances. He will send her away secretly. In other words, he's going to do his best to just smooth this whole situation over. He will claim the child as his own, but he'll make up an excuse why he will not marry 
his childhood sweetheart, Mary. He will then quietly just move out of the picture and she won't suffer the consequences of stoning. It's certainly the, the righteous thing to do in such a difficult situation. Actually, to Joseph, it sounds like a great plan to do. Until one night, an angel shows up in a dream. And the angel explains the situation to Joseph and tells him, Joseph, take Mary for your wife. She's about to be the mother of the Christ, the long-promised Messiah. Can you imagine what Joseph is thinking? Option number one, I'll send her away secretly. Then I'll leave town and I'll just leave the chips fall wherever they may. Yes, I might have a little egg on my face over doing this, but at least Mary won't be stoned to death. And this option will not disgrace her too badly. That's option number one. Or option number two, do what the angel tells me. Stick around. Continue with the engagement to Mary. And be the stepfather, the foster father, the legal father of Mary's child. The Christ. The chosen one. The anointed one. The Messiah. The one who will save his people from their sins. I can do my plan, send her away secretly, or I can do God's plan and take her as my wife. You know, Lord, either way, people are going to talk because people always do. That's just what they do. They're going to talk. Lord, I am really in a no-win situation. But I think I'll go with option two and do it your way. We all encounter difficult situations in life, don't we? Joseph's fiance was pregnant and he was not the father. Well, chances are you are or you might be sometime soon in a difficult situation that you did not cause. A difficult situ situation that is not your fault. You have no control over it. It's a situation that just happened. The question becomes, how will you respond to your difficult situation? Joseph, he had an angel appear to him in a dream. And because of this angelic dream, and by the way, if you read the scriptures, he had four different angelic appearances. He did as the angel commanded him. What well, chances are we might not receive a visit from an angel of the Lord. We might, but we might not. So what is our course of action? If we find ourselves in a difficult situation, what do we do? It's a situation that's out of our control. Lord, I don't know how I got here, but here I am. What do I do? Answer. Prayer. Answer. We read the word of God. Answer. We pray. Answer. We read the word of God. Answer. We pray. And another answer, we read the word of God. God will answer our prayers and speak to us through his word by the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells each and every believer. And if you seek your answer in this manner, through prayer and through reading his word, you will find his answer. Because I believe it's in Matthew chapter 6. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock. I like doing that. Knock. And the door will be what? It'll be opened. It'll be opened. Lord, what do I do? Well, the answer for us we ask, we seek, 
We knock through prayer and the reading of God's word. So the question for all of us here this morning is this. When you or I encounter a difficult situation, one that we didn't cause, will we seek, will we seek God's plan before we initiate our own plan? If we know that we have received God's plan through prayer and reading of his word, Lord, I know you're speaking to me. I know this is what you're telling me to do. The next obvious question is this. Will we do it? Joseph did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And because he did, he got to witness the greatest event ever, ever in human history. The incarnation of God in the form of a baby and the word became flesh and his name shall be called Jesus. And this is the part I like the most. And he will save his people from their sins. Joseph knew that the plan of God that as announced by the angel was far better than any plan that he could ever devise himself. He thought he had the right plan, but the angel gave him the right plan. Both he and Mary knew that God would walk ahead of them and turn a difficult time, a difficult situation into times that would glorify God. What wonderful opportunities await us when we go with God's plan, God's solution, as we navigate through difficult times. And we all will, if we haven't already, go through difficult times. And we must remember that difficult times still fall under Romans 8.28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Joseph never heard that verse before, but Joseph believed in that verse. He knew there was nothing he could do himself except follow the plan as announced by the angel. Folks, difficult times. They are going to happen to each and every one of us. And when they do, let's seek God's solution to whatever situation we find ourselves in. And Christmas, I can't leave this out. This is the Sunday before Christmas. It's the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Christ, a child born of a virgin, raised by a man who did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Jesus, a savior to all, all who will trust in him, a savior to all who will trust in his life, a savior to all who will trust in his words. A savior to all who will trust in his death and trust in his resurrection from the grave. Jesus, the one who will save his people from their sins. So I ask a simple question. Have you called upon the name of the Lord today? Folks, your eternity depends on it.